Hi, I'm Phil Constantine, and on this episode of Travels with Phil, we're going to the Hudson Meg Education and Research Center. A few years back, I was trying to find the War Bonnet Battlefield Monument and came across the Hudson Ming Bison Kill. You can see it's in the upper left-hand corner of the state of Nebraska. And this is a spot where over 600 ancient bison bones have been found all in one small area. So I'll show you a video here made in cooperation with the U.S. Department of Agriculture. This is the largest bison bone bed in North America. Bones from hundreds of bison have been unearthed here and their hidden stories are being revealed. What caused so many of these ancient bison to die here? And we learned about who or what killed them. Scientific research is unraveling this age-old mystery. Within the Oglala National Grassland in northwest corner of Nebraska sits the Hudson Ming Education and Research Center. Let's hear from some of the experts who work there. The predominant species found here in Hudson Ming is bison antiquus, which is a predecessor of modern bison bison. Here on the site, we have about 600 ancient bison skeletons that are dated to around 9 to 10,000 years ago. At the top of its hump, an adult male antiquus would have stood about 8 feet tall and weigh in around 2,250 pounds. Their horns measured over 3 feet from tip to tip. So yeah, it would have been massive. Ancient bison as well as humans shared the grassland habitat with other now extinct large animals including mammoths, short-faced bears, giant ground sloths, camels, and dire wolves. What you see at the end of the last ice age um, in this transition is a diminutization of um, many species. So a lot of large species became smaller and smaller and those very large species died out. Visitors to Hudson Ming had the opportunity to see into a different time with the Great Plains were teeming with large animals, much like Africa's Serengeti Plains today. The grasslands of North America are now exceedingly dry, but thousands of years ago it was a very different place. There would have been much taller grass, a more humid climate, and a much wetter environment than we have here today. Here we're able to look back and see how people lived, worked, adapted to those landscapes. Over four decades of research by different archaeological teams has revealed much about these ancient animals and the people who hunted them. Yet, different cult questions, conflicting theories have kept this site an active archaeological research area. The true excitement is the ongoing research and the mystery that remains. With each hypothesis, there is subsequent discovery which expands the hypothesis or discredits one and brings about a new one. The skeletons were first revealed in 1954 when the USDA Soil Conservation Service was digging a stock pond. A local rancher, Albert Ming, noticed that they were uncovering dozens of buried bones. The size of these bones and their apparent antiquity made him skeptical that they could have come from sheep or cattle. Albert Ming's friend, Bill Hudson, persuaded professionals to come out and take a look at the site. They brought it to the local university, Shadron State College, where they asked Professor Larry Agenbrod what he thought. And he said these aren't sheep bones. So he came out here and started excavating and found, you know, a large portion of bones, bison bones, which he surmised later, and a human cultural component. Not only did they find, you know, the bones of approximately 600 bison, but they also found spear points and knives embedded into the bones. People once used cliff jumps to slaughter bison in mass quantities. On foot and armed only with stone-tipped spears, ancient hunters would herd bison toward a cliff. They would chase and frighten the bison into a panic stampede, forcing the animals over the edge, which would break their legs and render them immobile. Other hunters waiting below would close in with spears to finish the kill felt that this was because of a cliff jump, a, a bison jump. Could these bison have been driven off a nearby cliff? Dismembered? And then dragged to the slat area for a final butchering? Was there once a large cliff nearby that has since eroded away? 
20 years after Dr. Agenbrod's original excavations, Dr. Larry Todd and Dr. David Rapson began to investigate further into the mystery at Hudson Ming. They excavated the supposed cliff jump location and determined that there were never a cliff in that area. If it wasn't people that killed these ancient bison, what was responsible? The current debate is between whether or not this is human caused or natural caused. Doctors Todd and Rapson thought it was more of a natural event. Perhaps it wasn't humans who killed the bison at all. Could it have been natural events that led to their deaths? A single lightning strike could have been the unlucky event that killed this herd of giants. A devastating flood might have washed the bison into this area where they were drowned or stuck in mud and unable to escape. Or perhaps a prairie fire caught these unfortunate animals off guard. They determined that it was a natural event, but they discounted or never even mentioned the theory of having a compound here or a corral. Compounds or corrals were techniques that people used to kill large numbers of herd animals. Much like cliff jumps, hunters often used a natural landscape feature to their advantage. They would work together to direct and contain the fast-moving bison into enclosed spaces. Once the animals' movements were restricted by natural features, the hunters could approach and slaughter them. Some bison hunters would rely on the same corral sites throughout generation. Past peoples would have revisited areas where resources were plentiful. They would come back to the same place time and time again. And so we can see two bones that were sitting next to each other may actually have a vast difference in time scale up to five, six hundred years. Carbon dating is a technique that allows archaeologists to precisely date an organic artifact. Thousands of years of dynamic geological forces, erosion and flooding, have mixed up the skeletons of different generations of bison antiquus. While carbon dating, scientists can determine that skeletons buried right next to one another are in fact from bison that lived hundreds of years apart. This was thought to be a Cody complex site, but recent excavations and discoveries have also shown that there is an Eden component, which is a much more recent cultural component. The Cody complex is characterized by distinct sets of adaptation strategies, techniques, and tools from Central North America during the first 2,000 years of the Holocene. While Eden Points are a subset of the broader Cody Complex, they bear several key features that sharply differentiate them from other Cody Complex points, such as lithic reduction methods of pressure flaking that gives their surface its distinctive geometry. So even though it's a very concentrated site, the breadth of data is wide and far-reaching. Since 2006, Dr. Mark Munoz of St. Cloud State University has led the excavations and research team at the site. They believe there is clear evidence that at least three different human cultures were present in the area during different time periods. These findings are leading many to believe that perhaps it was seasonal hunting over many generations that resulted in many bison skeletons at this site. You can have your own perspective, but you can also reflect on uh, what people tens of thousands of years ago might have been thinking and, and feeling and doing here. When a visitor comes here, I want them to understand that the truly fascinating part about this site is that you can come and see and develop your own theory based on evidence and analysis, discussions, and that have a shared perspective. That's the real power of this place. Why are the ancient bison here? What drew the people here? What did so many of them die in this place? There are still many mysteries yet to be unearthed at Hudson, Maine. Thank you very much for watching this video. Please feel free to make comments below as long as the language is family friendly. And if you like this video, please click on the thumbs up button below. You can also subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking on the circle with my picture in it in the lower right hand corner of the video. The arrow is pointing at it now. And once you have subscribed, you can be notified of when I have a new video posted by clicking on the bell icon in the description field below the video. Thanks again for watching.